In the last lecture, we implemented the functionality for this edit button where when we click on this edit button, it opens up a form and this form is populated with the details of that particular user. And in the button, it says update user. Now we want to implement the edit functionality. So here the user can go ahead and edit his details. And then when he clicks on this update user button, it should update the user in the database server. So basically these details should be updated in the database server. Let's see how we can implement this functionality. For that, we need to send a put request with the updated details to the database server. And that's what we are going to do in this lecture. Now, here, this update user button, and when I click on this add user button, in this case, this create user button, both these buttons are the same button. Only the value of this button is changing based on this edit mode state. So if this edit mode state is true, in that case, this update user text will be displayed inside this button. But if that edit mode is false, in that case, this create user text will be displayed in the button. Now, when we click on this create user button, in the app component, we are calling this onCreateUser function to create a user. And as I mentioned, this create user button and this edit user button both are same. So we need to write the logic to update the user in the database server in this same method. So the first thing which I'm going to do here is I'm going to write an if statement and there I will check if the edit mode is false. So if the edit mode is false, then only we want to send the post request. Otherwise, we want to send the put request. So in order to send the put request, again, I'm going to use this Exeos object. On this, we have this put method. And here, again, we need to pass a URL as the first argument. So I'm going to copy this URL and I'll pass it here. And as the second argument, we need to pass the user object. So here we are receiving that user object. Let's pass that. Now this user object we are receiving in the parameter. So this user is different from this user state. Now in order to differentiate this, let's call this state as user to edit. Let's go ahead and let's use this wherever it is required. So I'm using it here. Let's set it here. And I think this is the only place where we are using this state. Okay, let's go back to this on create user function. Now, before sending this put request, what I'm also going to show you is what this user object contains. So let me go ahead and log this user object, which we are receiving as an argument. And let's also go ahead and let's log user to edit. Okay, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page. Let me reload the page and let's open developer console. Let's clear everything here. Let's click on this edit button. Let's clear everything here also. And here, let me change this name to John S and let's change this last name to Smith S. Let's click on this update user button. So here we are logging the user object, basically this user object. And here we are logging the user to edit. So basically this state. Now you will notice that in the user object, the new values are displayed. So here first name is John S and last name is Smith S. So this is what we have updated the first name and last name to. But we don't see those changes in this user to edit state. So here it is still John and uh, last name is still Smith. And another difference is in this user to edit state, you will also see this ID property. But in this user object, which we are receiving as a parameter, there we don't have the ID property. Now here, when we want to edit this user, this John Smith, if I go to the database, first of all, we have this users collection. So this is going to be an object. Then inside that, we have these string values. So these string values are the key. And for these string values, these objects are its values. So if I go ahead and if I copy this URL and if I paste it in another tab and there if I append users.json, you will see that here we are receiving a JSON response. So basically first we have an object here. So this object is this users object. Inside that object we have 
this string value as a key and for that key this object is its value okay in the same way here we have another string value so this string value is the key and for that key this object is its value now from this users collection if i want to access a particular user so let's say i want to access this first user in that case what i can do is i can copy this string value and in the url here after this users i can append a slash and then that string value so that string value dot json if i press enter you will see that we are receiving that object okay so here you will see that the name is john and last name is smith so using this string value we can access these user objects and that's what we want to do here we want to access a user object and we want to update its details when we are passing this url it is going to return us all the users but here we don't want all the users we want a particular user and we want to update its details right so here in order to update the details of the user we are using put request but this url here is going to give us all the users but we don't want access to all the users we want access to a particular user so for that after this users we need to include a slash let me close this string and within this let's use this plus two times and within these two plus i want to use the id of that user now in this user object we don't have the id property but we do have the id property inside this user to edit state so i will copy this i will put it here and from this state i want to access its id okay in this way we are sending a put request to a given user using its id now this exios.put this put method is going to return us a promise so when that promise is resolved we can handle that result promise using then method to this then method we can pass a callback function and this callback function is going to receive a response for now let's simply go ahead and let's log that response but if the promise returned by this put method if it is rejected in that case it is going to return us an error so we want to handle that error using this catch method this catch method also takes a callback function and this callback function receives the error object and here inside this catch block we are simply going to set the error message state so we have a state called error message we want to set that error message state to error dot message with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page let me close this developer console here let's refresh the page let's try to edit mike s so let's click on this edit button and here i will simply change the last name to smith and let's also change the country from germany to maybe usa and city from berlin to new york let's click on this update user button let's close this form and let's click on this get users button so currently name is mike s now when i click on this get users you will see that now it is showing mike smith and the country has changed from germany to usa and city has changed from berlin to new york and if i go to the database there also so here we can see that it is the fourth record in the database if we expand this fourth record there you can see the last name has changed to smith and country has changed to usa and city has changed to new york let's try to edit one more user so here for mary king let's go ahead and edit this user and there let's select the gender as female okay let's click on this update user button let's close this form let's click on this get users button so here you can see for mary king the gender has changed to female earlier it was empty string now it is showing female so our edit button is working as expected now the only thing which is left here is when i try to edit a user so here let's say country is india and city is delhi when i click on this update user button this form should close automatically and the updated details should be fetched automatically currently if i click on this update user this form is not closing so i have to close it manually and the updated details are not fetched automatically for that i need to click on this get users button so let's go ahead and let's resolve this problem 
for that what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy these two lines of code from here or I will cut it from here so currently it is in this then method but let's make it common okay so after this else part let's add this code with this let's save the changes let's go to the web page let's try to edit this user back so I will change country back to Germany and city back to Berlin let's click on this update user button form is closed and the updated details are also fetched so in this lecture we learned how to send a put request to edit a record in the database server this is all from this lecture thank you for listening and have a great day